We need a bench. This is the bench that came with our project piano. I haven't looked inside it in a while. I could have used that a month ago. If anyone has any idea what this thing is, I'm afraid it might be a tool for facilitating violence. Let me know in the comments. The thing freaks me out. Back to our project. I believe this is the original bench that came with the piano when it was new. And just like the piano, it was in pretty bad shape when I got it. I don't think any of the screws holding this top on are original. From one of them, I even had to break out my old Phillips screwdriver. With how wobbly this bench is, I want to completely dismantle it and re-glue everything. To keep all the parts in order, I'll label all of the mating pieces. Two out of the four legs, I guess we can call that half, were loose but would not come off. So I used the heat gun to help loosen the glue joints. With the bench dismantled, I can start putting it back together. The first step is to re-glue these corner blocks. I'll make some clamping calls to help me glue up the odd shape. One of the four corner blocks would not come off, and I didn't want to risk breaking it, so I left it in place and worked some glue into the open gaps. While that dries, let's take a look at the footsies and tootsies of our bench. This one's broken and has been attached with nails, and I can see why they did that, because there's a loose glue joint here. So I'll take all four of these footsies off, or tootsies off, and re-glue them. I ended up breaking this one as I was removing it. I mean, when I was removing it, it broke. We'll just call it a pre-existing condition. The two pieces didn't want to go back together cleanly. Once again, epoxy putty saves the day. Yay. To make myself feel a little less remorseful about buying this oversized power tool, I'll true up the bottom of the footsies on this edge sander for a fresh glue joint. Okay, everything's trued up, now we can glue it up. Okay, while that glue dries, let's take a look at our bench top, or lid, or I don't know, butt board? Unfortunately, the veneer on this board is delaminating at the inside seams. This would be a very challenging repair to make. So instead of fixing it, oh yeah, and there's these screw holes here from this hinge, and it looks like this bench has been upholstered at one point. Instead of trying to repair all this damage, I'll simply replace the board. I found this bottom panel from an upright piano in my above ground landfill. It's got one veneer seam instead of two, so I'll try to land that seam in the middle of the cut. Okay, I've got my board cut to width. I'm happy with where the uh, seam landed. I did encounter a surprise knot here in the core wood. Nothing I can really do about that now. I'll fill it with putty. And I've made a note here. I'm really hoping I remember to put the hinges on this side so that this faces the piano. But between this issue, a, a couple wormholes, and some of my uh, expert carpentry, there's a few issues on this side, but I think I can work with it.
Much better. Purchase validated. All right, that cleaned up just fine, and I think we're finally rounding a corner on this project. With the board cut to size, now comes the hard part, color matching. This new board was refinished at some point, so I'll scuff sand it with some 320 grit and then hit it with an aerosol toner to try to darken the color. Thankfully, the toners allowed me to fine tune the color without having to completely strip and refinish the board. I actually ended up adding some green to dial the color in. With the new board finished, we need a way to tilt this board for ergonomic pumping of the player piano. There are several ways that manufacturers did this back in the day. The simplest is to build a bench with a permanently slanted top. The slant isn't very comfortable for hand playing the piano though, and it's nice to be able to fold that lid back down flat. Here's a bench that does just that. It uses wooden blocks called pickles. That's right, these doingy boys are called pickles. They're simple and effective. Here's another type of convertible bench I recently came across. This one's quite over-engineered, but pretty neat. For our project bench today, I'll copy this simple folding angled rail out of this tonk bench. A friend was recently doing some remodeling on his old house and found this piece of quarter sawn oak in the walls. I think there's just enough here to make a duplicate rail out of. First I'll take down the thickness. One thing I really like about this planer is it doubles as a metal detector. Oopsie. Metal detected means I can only get this board out of this area right here. Pretty lucky, uh, it's not obvious by now, I'm not really measuring at all. These holes, probably from some old lock, are uh, right where my cut's gonna be, so got lucky. While the stain dries on our new rail, Let's glue up the main body or frame of the piano bench. I'll start by gluing the lower stretcher to the footsie assembly. I'm using high glue because this is a very common part to get broken on the piano bench. With the base assembled, I can glue on the legs. First I did a dry fit, and I noticed several of the legs were loose in their sockets. The last thing I want is a wobbly piano bench. So for this, I'm gonna use epoxy. I used powdered dye stains to tint my epoxy to closely match the color of the finished wood. This will help conceal any gaps in the joints. Another nice thing about using epoxy for this application, although it's not at all traditional, it gives me a lot more working time for a tedious glue up like this.
All right, while that epoxy fully cures, let's find some new hardware for our bench. These are the original hinges, and they're a tad sad. Let's see what the above ground landfill has to offer today. Every time I dig through here, it feels like they only come in two sizes. Too big? And too small. I'll keep looking. Here we go. I don't mean to compare sizes here, but uh, these are better. As long as we're at the hardware store, I'm going to look for a new lid support. This is what keeps the bench lid from uh, flipping its lid. All right, all the replacement hardware is ready to go. Yes, I had to go to the actual hardware store for replacement screws, I'll admit. But I think we're ready to do a final assembly on this thing. The first step is to lay out the new hinges. It's so nice to have a fresh board here with no screw holes. Anybody catch this? Pause the video, comment below if you notice my near miss. That was close. <laughs> One of the many benefits of making a whole new board is that I wouldn't have any old screw holes to work around. Almost planted a whoopsie daisy for myself. Okay, the bench base is done. Let's uh, put a lid on it. Time to top this thing off. Butt board. Originally, the butt board was installed on the other side of the bench, near where I'm standing. I've moved it to this side so that I have fresh wood and for fresh screw holes with my new hinge pattern. Next, I can install the duplicate rail that allows the butt board to tilt. <music> Lastly, I'll install the lid stay. These are very finicky regarding where they can be positioned within the bench to operate properly without any clearance issues, so I'll mock it up with masking tape first. Well, it put up a fight till the very end, but I think I finally got it figured out. I can screw it down in place. That's all we got time for today, folks. In the next episode, Actually, the final episode in this series will make music. Thanks for watching and stay tuned if you want. No pressure. <laughs>